Is this thing on? Hi, I'm Ryan Szymanski, curator for Battleship New Jersey Museum and Memorial. Today, we're in the ship's television studio, and we're going to talk a little bit about the equipment in here and the sight system. But first, here's a word from the museum. Good day, everyone. I'm retired Navy Captain Walt Urban, and I'm coming to you live from the Battleship New Jersey. Currently, I'm sitting in the captain's import cabin on this mighty dreadnought, and I'm here to tell you a little bit about the history of this magnificent warship. New Jersey is the most decorated battleship in the history of the United States Navy, having served in World War II, Korea, Vietnam, and during the Cold War, earning a total of 19 battle stars and campaign ribbons. Now she's a museum and has been here for uh, 20 years almost. I had an opportunity to serve on board her during the refresher training in February of 1985 doing reserve duty as a ship's public affairs officer and was returning to her in February of 1991 uh, during her deactivation. And uh, at that point, you know, we were pretty much saying goodbye to the battleship for the last time, not knowing whether or not she would be scrapped, but people in New Jersey rallied, raised enough mon money to support her, and now she's here at the Camden waterfront, open to the public, and uh, soon, once this COVID thing is behind us, and we're looking forward to the day when we can resume normal operations. But in the meantime, we took a heavy hit financially, and we're looking for support financially from you folks, friends of the battleship. So if you could please help us out financially, we'd certainly support you. And we will refer you to our website where you can go and, uh, and help us in that regard. Thanks very much. It's been a pleasure talking to you. Have a great day. Battleship New Jersey always had television entertainment for its crew in some form or another. During World War II, the ship would have had probably about two movies at a time on board and they would have just been played to death while the ship was at sea. Uh, spaces like Chief Petty Officers, the Officer's Wardroom, and the Enlisted Mess could all be set up with a screen uh, to be uh, where you watch movies. You could even rig a screen out on the fantail using some of the canvas awnings that the ship carried uh, and play the movie up there in warm weather, which I imagine there was a fair amount of in the South Pacific. This was done for crew entertainment. When you met up with another ship at sea, it was pretty common to trade movies with them. This would have been the case all the way up through the Korean War. During the Vietnam War, uh, donations from the state of New Jersey allowed the crew to install a closed circuit television system around the entire ship, primarily workspaces and uh, berthing spaces. And so even to this day, we see the metal racks in all the berthing spaces where the televisions would have been mounted. Uh, old style CRT type televisions. So they could have played movies and programming on those. In the 1980s, the ship being a capital ship, she received what was known as the Sight System. Shipboard information, training, and entertainment. It was a Navy television system that could be installed on ships. And uh, we are in one of the spaces set up for that. We're on the O2 level, starboard side, in the aft part of the superstructure, uh, frame 117, if you want to check your booklet of general plans. This space is the TV studio where they could create their own content that would then be played all over the ship. You could either pre-record it or play it live on that same closed circuit television system that already existed on the ship. Now, I should mention during the Vietnam War, in addition to getting uh, videos that they could play, uh, they were also able to install uh, cable television antennas in the superstructure. And I've heard stories that uh, the various departments who had different birthing compartments would get their own antennas and hang them all over the ship and run them to their various uh, compartments so that when they were close enough to shore to actually pick up the signal, they could watch television. So when the ship was in Long Beach or Philadelphia getting ready before Vietnam, um, 
But then the first time the ship went out for gunnery trials, the overpressure from firing the 16-inch guns caused all those antennas to fall off of the mast. So in the 1980s, they, they did it up for real, and, and the ship had the capability of getting AFARTS, Armed Forces Radio and Television, uh, programs that were being broadcast if they were close enough, and of course with making their own content. Let's talk about what site means. Shipboard, obviously, we're on a ship. Information, uh, let's say you're an engine man and you've spent your entire day working in engine room number three. What the heck is going on in the rest of the ship? What, uh, where are we going? What's the weather like? So you've been working inside the ship all day. You don't even know what the weather's like outside or where the ship is going. These war-built uh, ships have very few portholes, none in the hull. So what's going on out there? You can get that information from the studio. Where is the ship headed? Uh, this battleship was often redirected to wherever a hotspot was. So where you were headed during last night's news broadcast might not be where you're headed tonight. And how much distance did you cover? This ship could go fast. Often she didn't because of fuel economy, uh, but she certainly could. Um, so she could cover a lot of ground during her day. Normally for training, you would have to take the sailor off of the ship out of their duty station and fly them back to a shoreside facility where they could receive their training for their next promotion, a new skill, whatever the case may be. And then you've got to waste assets to fly them back out to their uh, duty station again. Well, the Navy came up with this great idea. Hey, what if instead of flying these guys off of the ship every time they need training uh, and removing them from work, we just give the ship videotapes of these different training exercises. In the case of the Navy in the 1980s, all of these videos were on Betamax. And of course, entertainment. Uh, that's why we watch TV in the first place, or YouTube in the case of the modern world. There's still movies. Uh, there's any number of programs put on in this space. Uh, the ship also had a theater troupe that put on plays, and uh, those plays would have specifically been put on on shoreside facilities, but they could have probably uh, recorded them and played them again for the ship's company. Uh, you can even play messages from the captain or the XO, uh, hopefully not too much of a disciplinary nature. I've heard of other ships from the period uh, where the captain gets on and just absolutely yells at the crew to behave during the next port visit or yells at them for not behaving during the previous port visit. Uh, and I imagine Battleship New Jersey was no different. So just like late night television programming, there would also be religious programming broadcast from here produced by the chaplains. Let's check out this space. We've, of course, got a... Uh, studio table to record from, the green screen behind you. Notice the uh, soundproof insulation all around the space. It isn't really effective and uh, th there's a pair of sets of step-down transformers right outside the space that buzz constantly. So the noise canceling doesn't really uh, work, but in theory it's here. Also, as far as noise canceling goes, there's a switch here to control the 1MC system. So if there's a ship-wide broadcast going out, you can just have this turned off when you're recording. And there's a light outside the door that lets people know that you're recording in here, just like in a normal studio. Uh, and of course, we've got our camera systems. Here's an example of the TV racks that are throughout the ship. And of course, examples of our cameras that could be in here. I should mention that this stuff was state-of-the-art when the battleship was in service, so when she was decommissioned, all of this equipment was removed to be used on a different vessel. Our radio club volunteers went out and were able to collect all of this 80s and 90s equipment to refurnish the space. Uh, it doesn't necessarily look the way it would have when the ship was in service, 
but it's similar types of equipment doing similar sorts of things. I believe most of it came from a racetrack here in New Jersey that uh, went out of business. Anyway, we do not use any of this equipment. Uh, in theory, Radio Club either has made it work or can make it work, but we don't use any of this equipment or these spaces for our channel. Uh, the sound quality in here, quite frankly, is, is not good enough. And that's saying something because there's nowhere on a battleship that has good sound quality. Let's head next door and see where video production actually took place. Just aft of the TV studio is the TV control room. This features both a radio room where the ship could store a bunch of stuff, uh, where the ship could produce radio content, uh, not like the radio rooms where the ship is communicating with other ships, but like a licensed news radio program. So there were a number of uh, sailors on board who had their own personal radios and whatnot. And when you're out in the middle of the sea, you aren't getting any signal from anywhere. So you could broadcast music or whatever else from in here. And I suspect since it's unlicensed, it was uncopyrighted too, or you weren't worried about copyright. But here, of course, is the uh, brains of the operation. So this is the equipment controlled, used to control the transmissions from the other space. Uh, again, this is not the ship's original equipment, and it's probably a couple of years more modern than this ship would have had. However, it does still mostly work, so we can show it off to guests. Yeah, so, so this system allows you to have multiple cameras. Remember, there were multiple cameras in that space, so you can switch from different cameras at different angles. And uh, let's say the ship is doing a news program and they cut from the studio to a reporter on the bridge uh, interviewing the OOD about where the ship is going today. And then you can transition from one spot to another, select a different camera and do your segment and then come back to the group in the studio. Do you have any experience with this type of equipment? Let us know in the comment section down below. Battleship New Jersey receives operating support from the New Jersey Department of State, but also from a number of other sources, including viewers like you. Your support has allowed us to go from making one video a week to making five videos a week. If you would like to continue supporting us, there's a link below uh, for a way you can donate. Also remember to like, share, and subscribe because we're putting out so much content and you want to be notified when we put out new stuff. Thanks for watching.